Just to the west of Houston, Texas, is the Katy Prairie. At one time, stretching out over as much as 750,000 acres, the prairie has been home for hundreds of species of birds, waterfowl, and other wildlife. But over the last century, the prairie has suffered as the land has been settled for farming, ranching, and suburban development. Today, the nonprofit Katy Prairie Conservancy is dedicated to restoring and protecting at least 50,000 acres of the remaining Katy Prairie as development continues to push westward from Houston. And even more communities will grow as construction continues on the new Grand Parkway. Just beyond all this development lies the Warren Ranch. Warren Ranch is one of the oldest historic cattle ranches that's still operating today. It's 6,500 acres, and when we purchased the majority interest in it in 2004, it doubled the amount of acres that we had on the Katy Prairie that were protected. When Restoration Systems came along, started to talk to us in 2007 and 2008, they offered us an opportunity not only to help restore the ranch and make it back to its former glory, but also to provide income that we could then put back into the ranch to do even more improvements. Restoring more than 20 miles of impaired and channelized waterways is a challenging and expensive task that is made possible by mitigation banks. The mitigation banking system is based on the no net loss, which uh, if a developer, uh, that whether that's a home builder or a road or a hospital going in, if they impact waters of the U.S., streams or wetlands, the goal is to offset those impacts uh, close by in the same watershed. We saw this as an opportunity uh, to meet multiple goals of the Conservancy and the ranch. Uh, it's obviously, as a mitigation bank, it has a good fundraising opportunity for us. This is a joint venture with the Katy Prairie Conservancy and the Warren Ranch Group. So they receive a portion of the, the credits as they sell, the proceeds derived from the sale of credits. But it also provides opportunities to restore functioning natural habitats, native systems that have been somewhat degraded over the years through just normal agricultural management practices. We felt that this was a way that we could uh, bring some restoration activities to the ranch, uh, provide a benefit to the ranch, and uh, hopefully incorporate it into the working ranch operations. It was really a slam dunk. It was not only was it going to give us income, it was going to really greatly improve our creeks, our bayous, and our land. And for us, that was really the bottom line. This equipment here you see is constructing uh, what is part of an 18,000 foot project. Basically what we're doing is we're, we're putting the stream back uh, as close as possible to, way, to the way it was originally probably 100 plus years ago. The way streams function naturally in their meandering patterns and with diversity is a much more efficient and stable form. Our current older channel, as we refer to Warren Creek, is being done away with. It's been channelized. This channel has been straightened over the years. And then as they let the cattle get to the water, the cattle are walking in and out of the channels and their hooves are shearing off the banks. And so before you know it, we've got a system that's dug way down into the floodplain here that is not connected up to the top, which is what it would have done in nature. Natural stream, you want it to flood at a point and slow the water down. By raising that stream and reconnecting it to the prairie floodplain, we are holding more water in the Cypress Creek watershed, preventing water from overflowing to the Eddox Reservoir and then flowing to Houston. This project is the largest stream restoration for mitigation purposes project in the United States to date. It's over 120,000 feet when we get finished of restored streams. And so that's, uh, that's a monumental project. As you can see, most of what you're behind you is standard grading equipment. But we did, I did design a special hydraulic thumb to my spec specification. And what that does is enable us to bite up logs, brush, material, and set them at different angles. In the past, a lot of projects we've done, 
We have uh, usually done most of them by manual survey methods. About halfway through this project, uh, we decided to go with a new uh, Topcon satellite system. You still have to have a lot of knowledge about what we're doing to construct it, but um, we, we move along a lot faster constructing the channel and doing it all by satellite. Once the new stream channel has been dug, fiber matting is placed on the new banks until natural vegetation grows and protects against erosion. The mat you see behind us is uh, made out of coconut fiber. Uh, it's a real hardy uh, material. It is 100% biodegradable, but the life of it is probably five to eight years, so it'll help protect the slopes with our normal flow for quite a long time. Before we lay the mat, we seed the slopes we take and put some straw on top of the seed, and we lay the mat, we stake it with hardwood stakes so that they don't rot out real quick to give the stability of the mat, which helps erosion problems when you have a large flow of water coming through your channel. Eventually the mat will biodegrade 100%, and you'll be back to 100% natural environment. We're just helping hold the ground until uh, Mother Nature has time to get the seeds up and get vegetation growing, and things established like it would be in, uh, in the nature area. We're going to be introducing some live stakes which will come along and plant on about three foot intervals along the slopes and the bottom of the slopes which are native to this area. They're just uh, live sprouts that are cut and they're put in the ground while they're still green. They will root themselves and start growing and as they grow they will in turn produce some seeds off of that that will help replenish the entire streams. We're just giving Mother Nature a little helping hand to use some live sprouts instead of waiting for the seed on the trees and things to come up. Soon, temporary ryegrass covers the soil as protection until the native prairie grasses grow and thrive. Well, we put in a temporary seed along with a permanent seed. Our permanent seed is a wetland seed that was native to this area. The temporary seed is something to get a root system started to protect your soils till your native seed takes hold and comes up at a later date. And we're introducing the seed that was here at one time, back the way nature had it before mankind come in and started the farming ranching process in this area. What we do to build these streams, it's very important that they have the proper range of values between what we call dimension, which is the way they look in cross section varying through the stream, pattern, which is what we see when we look down from the airplane, and profile, which is what we don't often think of, but as these streams go downstream, instead of a flood control channel that goes like that, these streams are going like this through riffles and pools. And the way we have to design these is we go out and study stable streams that exist in a similar setting and we take reams of data on the, all these different facets and then we develop algorithms to scale those back to our projects. So what you can see here is that the meandering pattern that we see looking down from above also has a, a, a longitudinal component in these deep pools, long straight riffles that drop down to the next pool. And we've got these natural features that we see in nature like these log cross riffles here and the little micro pools that form behind them. You see those root wads in the bank over there. And then if you come down here, you can see a log vein, which again, changes the direction of the water the way it would in nature and then you've got that big root mass over there that provides microhabitat and bank stability. Once we implement all phases out here on the project, not just phase one but everything out here, we will, we will have built about 125,000 feet of brand new fencing to keep the cattle out of the easement. And what this has done is crisscross the ranch with a bunch of areas that have to be fenced out and managed separately from the ranch. We intend to keep the ranch functioning as a ranch and we had to find ways to make this project work that it would actually enhance our ranching operations rather than impact them. So since we're getting the, the cattle out of the streams, we still have to find a way to get water to the cattle. 
So we are building wells, we're uh, putting in cattle watering stations so they can still have cattle out here, they'll just be out of the streams. One of the major benefits of this project is all the new fencing uh, that will be built to keep the cattle out of the riparian quarters will actually allow us to do a better job of managing our grazing on the ranch itself. Once the, the project closes out, it'll then go to a third party, the Texas Land Conservancy, which will hold the easement. So they'll be the, the easement holder on this particular project and will also fund the Katy Prairie Conservancy for the long-term maintenance of this project after we're done. The stream mitigation project offers multiple benefits to many different groups. Income to the Katy Prairie Conservancy, to restoration systems, to the Warren family. It offers amazing improvement to the ranch itself through the habitat enhancement and through our cattle operations. It also offers ecological benefits. The streams as they are redeveloped and restored will slow water down, reduce flooding. It also will improve water quality in the creeks and that is clearly a benefit to the whole region. In addition, there are many, many people who live and reside and work work in Houston and they'll be able to use these streams and the areas beside them as a recreational benefit as well. One of the things about these projects is they're really going to look good 20, 30 years down the road and that's just the maturity of these type projects is how long it takes for them to get where the trees are really growing, shading out the stream. There's no better feeling than to be able to design something that's actually promoting the sustainability of, of our communities that we live in and that's exactly what these projects do. What we're doing is a very is very important, very important. We've took away a lot for years now we're we're putting back. 